Okay, okay, let's get started. Um, today we will start learning another technique uh, called the formal string attack. And uh, we're going to spend uh, at least the three modules on this. And uh, this is a, a very interesting attack, different from buffer overflow. Sometimes can be more powerful than buffer overflow. And it's also a little bit tricky to pull off. So a lot of fun playing with this. So uh, first, a little bit of history about this vulnerability. So this is discovered in the summer of 2000. Maybe before that, someone already discovered. This is uh, a little bit uh, sketchy, it couldn't be vulnerable, but it was actually um, you know, 2000 in the summer. Um, the the community, security community, not necessarily the research community, also hackers, also developers, uh, they noticed that uh, this vulnerability can really be exploited, can be exploited to hijack the control flow of everything, can lead to arbitrary code execution, uh, and uh, the first issue was uh, mentioned. Uh, when I exploit was developed for Washington University FTP demon. And actually that was a widely used FTP server back then. And uh, uh, the exploit was also posted on Bugtramp mailing list. So Bugtramp still exists. Some of those hacker hacking communities still exist, also including Frack. I remember I asked you guys to read a document the smash stack for fun and profit from Frank. So that magazine still exists. Uh, there are some overlap between the hacker community and the academia, but um, most of the people, they just belong to one of the communities and there has been some conflictions between the communities as well. <laughs> yeah, so when we talk about maybe next week, when we talk about the return oriented programming, we can also touch a little bit on the history of that. Um, because return oriented programming, uh, there there was a paper published in 2008, 2009, I think 2008. So it coined the term return oriented programming, and uh, it's a very well written paper published in CCS, one of our top conferences, so, which I went to last week uh, in Utah. Uh, so it's an annual conference. Uh, but the hacker community claimed that they discovered that years before. They just didn't write a paper. And uh, the, um, the researcher get all the credit, but there has been uh, a lot of uh, confliction between them. Uh, anyway, back to the format stream. So this vulnerability uh, allowed remote execution, get a rule, get a root access to system running on that server uh, without authentication. Um, so, the format stream vulnerability occurs uh, when programmers pass externally supported data to a printf function or similar functions, the functions with a format stream. Later, we'll talk, we will talk about what is a format stream. Okay. So uh, this bug is a little bit different from a buffer overflow, but sometimes we can also utilize it to do buffer overflow. But fundamentally, it's a different problem. Um, most of the people will argue this vulnerability falls under the umbrella of input validation box. So printf is a C standard function, and it should have a, it has some parameters, right? And uh, the input, the parameters, this should follow some kind of the rules, uh, but the, Developers input, sometimes the developers take inputs just from the external network or whatever. That input doesn't follow the rule. And because of that, printf function and the, the class of function, they do not validate the input. 
They do not check if the uh, input follow those rules. So this is actually easy to fix at a source code level. Sometimes much easier to identify, much easier to fix uh, at the source code level than buffer overflow. Buffer overflow, uh, last class, I showed you some examples. For example, that for loop example, it's not that easy to identify. There is a buffer overflow in the first place, right? You see examples, simple examples, string copy, memory copy, those ones. But then there are the for loop, just a raw pointer. Those are not easy to identify. But for my string vulnerability, uh, usually it's easier to identify and easier to fix. And you don't need to change other part of the program. Uh, however, uh, the problem itself, uh, if the bug itself, if it exists, is very serious. And it is still exists in all kinds of the systems. Uh, so the root cause here is um, specifying format string characters in the arguments uh, passed to printf or those functions. And those functions will utilize the variable length argument, uh, the feature in the C library. Okay. So we're going to, so first let's take a look what are C functions with variable arguments? So C functions, um, they, so when that function is defined, the developer of that function doesn't really know how many arguments were be when this function is called. It could be multiple, okay? It could be different ones. It's not a constant. So most of the functions or all the functions we have seen so far in this class, they only have a constant fixed number of arguments, right? But a C language do allow you to have variable lengths of arguments. And this is supported by the C standard library. Uh, to do that, uh, you can implement your own function with uh, variable arguments. Uh, you just need to include this header. It's a standard argument header. Uh, and in this header, several types are introduced. The first one is variable arguments list uh, and several macros to operate on the object of that type. Uh, they are called the VA underscore start, arg, and end. Okay, so let's take a look one example. How uh, can we use this? So, so now you are a C programming language developer. Uh, you develop a function called average, okay, which is to compute the average of several integers. And uh, you don't know how many integers are there. You want to just write one function, right? So you can write many, many functions if you if there are two arguments, three arguments, right? So uh, the syntax of this is you need to specify the first argument. You need to give it a type and name. However, you do not need to specify the second and all other arguments of this function. Okay? So you just needed uh, three dots to represent that there could be many arguments. And at the beginning of the program, the function, you need to uh, declare a list, VA underscore list. Uh, then you need to tell the program, uh, which parameter argument is the first one. So you use a macro VA underscore start, pair the, this VA list, which one is the first. Then this one is the number, and you know the type of this one because here it specifies the type is an integer, right? But for all other arguments in the future, you don't really know the type, right? It could be any type. That's why the program needs to Decide what the type is. In this case, this function only takes integers. It takes many integers. And uh, to get the next argument, what you do is you call the macro VA underscore arc, and you are getting from this list. And the type of that argument is an integer. And in this case, we are getting different many integers. So under the hood, you can imagine, so there are many arguments. How they will be passed onto they will be passed on using stack to pass this, right? So it's just 
uh, stack is just one argument after another one. And uh, this bar list basically tells the program where the first argument and the type of the first argument, the type of the second argument, because of the type, we know the size. So we just keep going to the next memory location to fetch that one or the argument, right? So since you have been seeing a lot of this assembly code, I think from the, from here that you can imagine what this macro does to fetch something, another object from the stack. So when you finish the fetching this, you uh, call another macro, the way a underscore end to, uh, to end this. So in this function, we use the first argument to represent uh, how many arguments are there. Okay. The first one is basically a number, the number of all other following arguments. But there are many other ways. You don't have to do it this way. Uh, the format string is another way to do this. Then we can call this function. So here we have two different uh, instances of calling this function. Uh, the first one, we get the average of two, three, four, five. And there are four arguments. We want to compute the average. So the first argument for the average function, we tell there are four arguments. The second time we call this, we're computing the average of five, 10, 15, that's it. So we tell it in three arguments, okay. So this is how you develop uh, a C function with variable arguments. So how it works under the hood is we have uh, the main function. The main function calls the average function, right? Uh, here I'm only showing the stack when we call the first, the first time we call print f. So the first time we call print f, the main function, the main function were here, the main function calls print f. And there are, uh, actually I'm only looking at this part. I'm not even looking at the print f part. Well, I'm only looking at the average part. So the average has five arguments in this case. And all of them will be pushed onto a stack on x32. So then we are going to push this to uh, the rightmost argument will be pushed onto the stack first, right? We we'll have the fixed argument, fourth argument, third one, second one, first one. Yeah. Now after that, there will be the return address, the saved EBP. So basically, this part is a stack frame of average. This the whole thing is a stack of the main function. So this is a part of, you understand. Then the, if we consider this uh, bar underscore arc as a pointer, it will first point to this one. Then because we tell it the next argument is an integer, then we will get the size of this, point to this one, this one, this one, this one, right? And we will never go beyond this. Okay. Because at the very beginning, we tell uh, to the function, we have four arguments, right? We have four arguments. However, this is this is a piece of code, so you can make mistakes. So this is the right way to write this average function. But you can write it a different way. Nothing stops you to put 10 here, right? Nothing stops you to put an eight here. So what happens if you put some other numbers there? Let's say in this case, this is uh, the wrong way to implement this function. The only difference is here, actually. So the, this, the implementation is the same, actually. We didn't change the implementation. It's just the calling. When we call this function, we are making a mistake. We are only giving four arguments, but we are telling it there are five arguments. So what will happen? Yeah. Uh... Yes, it could be save EVP. Um, if they are together, yes, but maybe there are some buffers between here, possible, right? The compiler could do that. Yes, you probably will use part of the save the EVP or just the save the EVP of the face argument. Okay. So 
it depends on how uh, the developers right there code. So if we go to our server, Yes. The pre process team file, we have multiple implementations. It will copy the function. Right? No, it's just one copy of the function. How does it, I mean, how does it know that first instance will have a report or That's part of the, that's part of the code of average, right? Because in the code average, they use that va underscore va or argue or whatever to um, figure out how many arguments are there. Yes, the previous functions um, you we have we have saying they only have a fixed number of arguments, so they don't need to figure out how many arguments are there. Each argument has a name, but right? here. Those arguments do not even have a name because we don't know, even know how many of them, right? So then we need to, then we just need to get the value and the size of it. Then we only need to know how many are there at a runtime, how many are there. Yeah. But how does the pre process seem like after the year? Uh, does it expand the macro? Like, then I'm thinking, like, what will the dot 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 expand to when the pre process? The dot 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 doesn't expand to anything. That's just the that's just the prototype. That's just the name, right? Doesn't really matter. So that dot 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 basically tells the compiler this piece of function program has to use uh, VA arc, VA star. If you don't use that, it's not going to work. So that that part is handled by the compiler, not the preprocessor. What do you mean by preprocessor? The the macro expansion part. Uh, the what, macro expansion where I think the macro expansion will actually inject some code there. It will instrument the some code there. Yeah, to do this job. Yeah. So if we run this program, we go to yeah. Go ahead. That's a very good point. So here, first of all, we do not really reserve this space. So the caller will push those there, right? The caller will push arguments there onto the stack, not the core E, okay? And uh, the core E doesn't really know how many are there, and it's a caller's job. So for different instances, of calling this average function, the caller will push different number of arguments there. But the call E, the code doesn't need to change. Yes. By the time you get to the pushing by the where will the letter to the region of the region from the other? You know what you're saying? So this one the, here is the average function, right? This is a stack frame of the average function. So this return address is um, somewhere in the main function. This is a save the EVP is basically points to the main functions, but this part is pushed by the main function. So in the job of quarter. Yes. Yes, and also the job of quarter to clean up. Yeah, we talked about this before. What if there are like multiple types of arguments into there and bring them? It's okay, as long as you have a way to tell the core E the type of that. And that is exactly what format strings is doing. The format string is better. So I guess you used the print F before, right? So in print F, what do you have? You have percentage E, you have percentage F, or percentage double D or whatever. So what are those? Those are basically telling what type of arguments are there, how big they are, right? So they do not have to be the same size. As long as you have a way to tell it. Now, in this case, in the average case, we, we just use everything on the input. Yeah, that's 
So if we run average, and we can correctly calculate the average, this is the average function you just saw. Then we go to the average run function. You can see we get some weird value, right? That's because some garbage or whatever, maybe meaningful data on the stack was taken into consideration when we compute that average, right? And we don't know what that is. Maybe that's part of uh, the safety EBP, maybe just some buffer. We didn't check the battery code in this case. Okay, so that is basically in C uh, and also C++ how the uh, variable argument works. And uh, you actually ask a related question. So this is, that feature is totally different from um, another feature in C++, which is function overloading. So function overloading is you have a function with the same name but they have different prototypes. And they have totally different functions. They have totally different implementations. They're not even related, okay? For human, for developers, for, for if we read the code, like the human readers, we think they are related because they have the same name. But actually, they're not. It compares a totally different uh, two-piece system of code. So in C++, I think C doesn't really support this, right? Uh, maybe the newer version. Maybe not. Yeah. As far as I remember, C down support this. So in C, we can use this function overloading uh, to uh, design multiple functions with the same name but different parameters. Okay. You can you cannot de design functions with the same name, same parameter, but different return address. Okay. Uh, not return, return back. It has to be new parameters. And then also this is different from the a virtual function concept in C++. That's a, that's a totally different story. So in this case, we have two implementations of average. One takes three arguments, another one takes four arguments, and we compute that. So let me show you why they are uh, different. So let's say we go to CPP overload, CPP overload. Let's just look at this. So we have two average functions, right? In this case, one with three arguments, one with four arguments. And when we disassemble this, you will find two copies of this, uh, two copies of function. Why is called, this is the real function name after the compiler changes the name. Okay. The compiler will actually put the type of the parameters, arguments there. So the average becomes average I, 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 which means four I arguments. And this is one function, then So the seven here actually tells you the function name has seven characters. Now after the seven characters, those are arguments type. Then there is another version of this, you can see. This is I, I, I. Okay. So there are two different copies of uh, code. They're not related. But if we go to the previous version, the average from C code with uh, variable arguments. This is the main function. This is the average function, right? You find the average function. And there is only one copy of average function. I'm showing you everything here, okay? From the beginning, 
So those are C library functions from start, right? To main function, to other function. There's only one average function and not multiple copies. Okay, so with that background knowledge, now we can uh, get into what is format string functions. First of all, there are several format string functions. The one you are familiar with, fprint, sprint, snprint. Then there are some even log functions, some weird system log functions use format strings as well. Okay. So they are all vulnerable to this kind of uh, um, bug. Um, so all those format string functions, uh, they are used to convert some simple C data types to a string representation. Okay. We're trying to print something basically. And they allow to specify the format of the representation. Uh, they can output to many different places, std out, uh, a file, there are f, print as well, right? To write to a file and also like a syslog, to write to a system log file. Uh, so this class of functions, how they work, um, all of them have a format string and the format string controls the behavior of the function. The format string tells the function how many arguments are there, what are the types of arguments, same as what we saw in the average function. Uh, it specifies what types of parameters are there and how they should be uh, printed. Uh, the, the parameters, obviously, they are saved onto the stack, pushed onto the stack by the caller. Um, they can be saved by value. They can also be saved by reference. By reference here means we have an address of that. For example, it could be a string. So you used well, one of the very first program you write when you code in C is a hello word, right? You, you write a print F percentage S, then a string hello word. And that percentage S means the program print F should look for an address. So percentage S means a string, right? And a string in C is we are actually not passing the string itself to the parameter, we're putting the address of that. The percentage S is telling you should look for an address, and at that address, there is a string. Right. Then uh, the coding function has to know how many parameters it pushes onto the stack. Uh, then later, it will do the stack balance uh, when the format string function returns. Uh, like I said, there are many of those. You are familiar with printf. There are also, you probably use sprintf to print it to a string. Print F will print out to uh, STD out. Uh, print F will print into STD out. S print F will print to a buffer. S here is a string, string is a buffer. Okay. The S unprint is a safer version of that. You can hear how many um, the size, the most number of size you want to print or copy to. Then there is a V print F. Uh, I don't remember what V stands for. V is, oh, V is actually print to a fire string. So there is also a, a F, oh no, F is going to a fire, fire string. Uh, v is to, oh, V is through a, a variable argument structure. So you can also use that. There are other functions as well. There are error functions as well. Okay, now we can take a look at what is a format string. We have been keep talking about this. First of all, it's called a format string because it is a string, okay? So all C strings, they end with a zero, okay? So remember that. In C, we end a string with zero. So the format string contains uh, several different things. The first is can contain the text to be written, okay? So a string hello world, those letters, H E L L O, the white space, those are just text to be written, right? So that string is not a format string yet. Uh, if 
the string has format specifiers, and then it becomes a format script. And the format specifier has a very well defined prototype or format. It looks like this. The most important thing here is the percentage sign. You are know, using this. You do print F, percentage D, percentage N. Well, I get. Did anyone use percentage N before? It is percentage D, percentage F, S, right? So N is uh, one of the very tricky vulnerabilities we're going to learn next class. <laughs> oh, you know that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so the percentage sign is basically the format specifier. And in a format string, you can have multiple percentage sign. And after the percentage sign, this should be the format, okay? There must be a specifier, at least the one. And the specifier can be a D, means decimal. Can be X, means hex. Can be S, means string. That's what you have been using. So what have been, you, you have been using so far, most likely you, you didn't use anything here. You only use percentage sign and a specifier, right? Uh, and also the percentage sign, uh, the ASCII value is just the 25 in hex. So if you have a, it doesn't have to look like a percentage sign, right? So you, you write you write a script and you put a hex value 25 there, that's basically a percentage sign. So we're going to go through each of this because in our attack, we're going to use that. So the first one is the specifier, uh, this part, and you are familiar with this. If you, you want to print a decimal, uh, integer, you use either D or I. That's probably what you learned at the very beginning when you start learning C. Then if you want to print unsigned, you can use U, uh, X for hex, F for float, uh, E for scientific notation, and actually you can have a uppercase or lowercase E. The difference is when you print out, one will look at a lowercase E, another one will look at a higher uppercase E, um, there are others, G, A, C, character, you know that one, S, string, you know that one, a P, pointer, you probably also use that one. So in our class so far, some of the examples I gave to you guys, I print out the address, right, for the function's address, and I use P to do that, percentage sign P. Then, very interesting is this N. We're not going to use this today, but uh, next next week. So, uh, can I see it? Wait, I'm just gonna stand up. Yes. So, this one, we're not print out anything. Percentage N, we're not print out anything. But it will also look for arguments. And that argument is supposed to be an address. And it's going to write how many this print f function have been printing out to the terminal or whatever? How many characters, how many bytes it has been printing out that number to that address? Okay. So this can be an arbitrary write vulnerability. Yeah, you can write something to the memory. I'm going to say more examples later. Yeah. Now we have the uh, flex part, waste part. Precision part, uh, they are not super important for our attack. Um, so probably we will just skip this, but when we need them, we will go back to this. So I will have some examples. Uh, the lens part is more useful for us. Uh, the lens, there can be several letters you can use, um, but the default Y is just L. If you do not do anything, it's just L. So probably you use this percentage LD before. Yeah, some of you probably use that percentage LD. And that L is a lens here. It means this is uh, just a, a int size. In 32 bit machine, it's just 32, 32 bits, four bytes. Right? Then if you have uh, in a 32 bit machine, you, you want to print out. Uh, Eight bytes number, then you need to use uh, LLD. Telling that the data print action look for is eight bytes, not four bytes. You also can print out 
one byte or two bytes using H or HH. And those do not only work for the specifiers you want to print on them, huh? it also works for the percentage n when you want to write them. Okay, so we have a very powerful tool here. We can write anywhere and we can write one byte, four bytes, whatever we want. Very powerful tool. Okay, let's look at this example. This is a, looks simple, but I, I bet um, you do not really understand every bit of this. This, this can be actually a little bit interesting. Uh, we have uh, many printf statements here. The first one is printf characters, they like column, white space, percentage C, what is percentage C? That's character, right? C is character, so we're going to print out one character. So that percentage C will make the printf function to look for one argument. And that argument is supposed to be a character. That's, that's why here we have a character A, okay? Then we can have, uh, um, so it can also be an integer because they have the same ASCII number, right? This A character and 65, they are the same thing. So if we print two characters, one is A, another one is 65, they are actually the same thing. Oh, this one is the uppercase, sorry. Yeah, this lowercase should be 75 or whatever. Yeah, that, that, okay. And this part, this part is just a text. So it will be printed out directly. Even the white space will be printed out directly. That person is C will be replaced. Here we have two characters, two letters. It will be replaced by one letter, which is A. There's another white space. Then there is a new line at the end. That's why this one goes to new line. The second line we print two decimal numbers. Uh, the first one is only four bytes. The second one is eight bytes. We use LD. Uh, no, this one, this one, LD actually is also four bytes. Okay, LLD is eight bytes. So in this case, then we print out those two. Okay, things get a little bit more interesting with this one. Look at this one. This is the percentage sign. After that, we have a number. Then we have B. First of all, we do not have the months, H or L. We don't have that. But we do have a number here. The number here um, is part of uh, is part of width. It tells print f function how many bytes you should output, you should print here. How many characters you should print here. So in this case, we have a small number, 1977. But we want to print out 10 characters. So we are going to use white space to fill those other six characters. So here is one white space. This part and this part becomes, this part will be six, yeah, six white space. So actually between here, there are seven white space, okay? Then if you do not want to use white space, you can also use other characters to, to fill that. And let's say here we want to do zero. And this zero means when we print out, it will be here. We have a white space, okay? After white space, we have six zeros. The 1977. The next one, we just print out uh, decimal hex or whatever. Um, or we, we can speak this one. Uh, this one is float number, lowercase e, higher case e. Um, here is another one. Uh, yeah, so this star here actually, we're looking for the second parameter, look for how many um, white space you want there. Then the last one is just a percentage S, you click on a string, and uh, you know that this string, the string itself is not pushed down to the stack. The address of the string is pushed down to the stack. 
So those are the examples of a format string. So now you understand the role of this format string. For most of those print, uh, print uh, those format string functions, the first argument is the format string. Some of them is not the first argument, could be the second or third, doesn't really matter. So in that format string, there are percentage signs. And each percentage sign where the will trigger that format string function to look for other parameters, even that percentage n, which doesn't print out anything. In this case, uh, the whole thing is a format string. And here we have percentage c. So the function will look for this. And the, this one will look for this. Okay. So if you code this in a wrong way, you can code this in a wrong way, right? Because same as the average function, you can give more arguments. If you give more arguments, doesn't really matter. The printf will never look for those arguments. Those arguments will be on stack, but printf never use them. You can also give fewer arguments. In that case, it could be a problem. The printf because printf will look for those arguments and they were finding garbage, right? Or they may find some may even trigger a segment four, depending on what kind of uh, format screen can specifies you have to. Go ahead. The compiler not complaining what the user. No. Yes. Because the compiler is not trying to interpret this format string. Compiler only considers this as a string. You will put it somewhere in the memory, get the address, that's it. Doesn't interpret this part. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at this format. Uh, this unspecifier things. Most of you never used this before. Okay. Um, the simple example, we have A and B, two values. The first print F is A is one number, B is one number, then A and B. Okay, that's it. very simple. So what should be the output here? Just A is zero, B is zero, right? That's it. The second one, we have a bracket here, changing Y space, uh, changing A and B dot dot percentage N, okay? One, two, three, four, five, percentage N again, slash N, slash N is new line. Okay. Then, like I said, percentage N looks for at address and writes something to that address, okay? Percentage n, the first percentage n looks for the first address, which is A's address. The second percentage n looks for the B's address. Okay? And we're going to write something into A and B. Okay, They're on stack. We're going to write something. So what are we going to write? We're going to write at this point, how many bytes print F has already printed off. That's it. So how many bytes we have here? The bracket is one. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's a white space. Eleven, twelve. I, I think it's twenty. Ah, uh, yeah. So then after that, let, let's assume it's twenty. We it doesn't really matter what the content print F has been outputting. What matters is how many bytes. Okay. In this case, maybe here it's twenty bytes. Then that twenty bytes. The percentage n will write 20 into this address, which is a. So a becomes 20 instead of zero. Okay. So after that, this function keeps writing, the write one, two, three, four, five, five more bytes. So in total, at this point, this function has been writing 25 characters. And that will go to the uh, b. So after this, a and b's value will be changed. Okay. If A with written as 20, would B not be 26? Is it like counted in the 25 here? Okay. Here is 20. Here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This percentage n doesn't output anything, right? Okay, we're only carrying that up. Exactly. This one doesn't output anything. That's why it will be 25. Okay. Uh, let's let's take a look. Format. 
Entonces, Okay, so you can see, and at the very beginning, a zero B zero after we call in print F, we're actually changing A and B, A becomes 20, B becomes 25, right? And let's go back. The, this calling of print F is done. Here is another call to print F. Now we have another call to print F. And this code to print F has nothing to do with the first one. So A and B stays as 20 and 25. However, internally, the print F, so this print F, it hasn't printed anything yet. So it's it's counter, it's zero, right? Then in this case, let's say in the beginning we have the same thing. So this is 20 bytes, right? Now after that, we are adding percentage 0, 20, E. Okay. So we are going to print out an integer, and this integer we're going to print out is 50. But how long we are going to print that integer 50? Well, right? 20, actually. Yes. So this 20 tells that we want the width or the length of this whole thing to be 20 bytes. Okay. So this thing, percentage 0, 20 D, we're actually print out 18 zeros because of the zero, then five zeros there, okay? In total, there will be 20 bytes. Now, what is this? There's a lot of white space. So that's one more byte to print out. So this part is actually 21 bytes, okay? And from here is 20 bytes. So, so far, we have been printing out 41 bytes, okay? Then we have a percentage n, we're putting that into A. So what will be A's value? A's value will be 41. Okay. Then we have a longer percentage of put into B. What will be B's value? Exactly, also 41, because between them, we didn't print out anything, right? So after the sick, so this one, what you can say, this one, both A and B's value becomes 41. Okay. Then the last example, we are print out float, this floating number. The precision here, the, after the dot, the precision is true. Before that, it's the waste is 10. So the whole thing will be 10 plus 2, 12 bytes, 12 characters here. Uh, then before the, this one here, we know it's 20, then we have floats. Floats is six, seven, eight. Um, that's, well, that's all that, uh, that's a top 20. So this should be, if I count correctly, this should be 40. No, this. So this part is 10. You don't want this is so oh the whole thing is 10. Okay, in this case the whole thing has to be 10. The precision is two. The waist is 10. Not the waist is not only uh, before the dot after the whole thing. Okay, so any questions so far? How does percentage n work? So, very thinkable about the legitimate use case of this computation. Where is it going to be? Percentage n? Yeah. Where is it going to be? We have already done some of the other parties. I don't really know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know who actually used this for something. But uh, hackers find it all. So it can be used for hacking, for sure. Yeah. So there are some other extension of format string as well, like this one. Uh, we do not really use this 
in this class. So there's a dollar dollar sign. It's a number and a dollar sign. Okay. So that one basically look for um a specific argument in the list. Like uh here we have two dollar, okay, and a if you don't look at two dollar, you will say what percentage B, okay, means you are looking for integer. And uh, if you only have a percentage D here, you are going to look at the very first argument, right? But here, what the next argument after the format string, and the two dollar sign means that you should look for the second argument instead of the next argument. So the the advantage of this is you can reuse those arguments. So here we can print the same number in hex, right? Then we can do two dollar. Uh, with this one actually is not a format string. Then we have a x. Then we are going to look for the second argument. So we are reusing that argument. If without this feature, we have to write that number twice. Right? So in this case, we have one, two, three, four. We have four percentage signs, and we are only giving two um, arguments here. This can also be misused if you have uh, three or four dollar. Right? Yes, they be misused. Uh, we're not going to use this along in the class. I just want to uh, share with you this is possible. With some extension. Okay. Okay, so um how could this go wrong? This could go wrong if the format string is offered by the user. So far, the format string you have seen is a hard-coded string, right? It has a percentage sign, blah, 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 but it's hard-coded. But it can also be specified, but it's a string, so it can be specified by the user, okay? Um, if this is specified by the user, then the user can determine how many percentage blah, blah, blah are there, right? Well, for printf or whatever format string functions, that is just an address, right? You can be can be any string from anywhere, address. But if you hard code it like that, then that string will go to the dot data or read only data section, and that address will be fed into the printf or whatever. Okay, so the correct usage of the format string functions is print f, the format string, then the arguments. But you can do it this way. Print f, just some user input. And that user input can be a format string because the first argument is supposed to be a format string, right? And this is where things can go wrong. Okay, let's look at our first example. Format string level one. We have a main function just called a vowel pool. Uh, vowel pool has a local variable s, 20 bytes. It prints out what is your input. Then it calls gets to put the input into this local variable, right? So gets will get input from where? Yeah. From std in. Then, so here there could be a buffer overflow, right? Because you are putting into this. But this program, a calorie is enabled, an x is enabled. So even if you can, so you cannot really overflow because it's calorie. Uh, we're not trying to bypass calorie in this one. The so the vulnerability is not really here. Uh, or exploitable vulnerability is on here. 
what is exploitable is this one, print out directly using the string S. Okay. It's, a, it's a very small string, just 20 bytes or 19 bytes, depends on if you're counting or ending zero. So, so this is from user input. The user input is directly fit into print app, right? In this case. The, let's say, what could go wrong here? So this is what the stack look like, and this is a disassembly of this. I would probably do not need to go through all of this assembly. Uh, let's just look at the stack. So the main function calls volpool, volpool calls print out, right? Volpool calls gets, then called print out. And then this stack, right now this is um, when print f is called. So when print f is called, the stack looks like this. At the top, there will be main. Then there will be volpool. Volpool has its own return address, save the EDP. There's a calorie. There's a local variable s. Then there may be some address here. We don't know what they are. Then volpool will push, will call print f. And printf has only one argument, which is the address of the string, right? So the address of that string will be pushed onto the stack. So this one points to here, actually. So after that, we'll have the return address, save the EDP. So starting from here is printf to stack print, right? So the string, we give it there, right? So we can give it anything. Let's say we give it percentage x, percentage x. Then the function print f, when it looks up this, when, when uh, print f, when you say, so when you say this string, it will believe there are three parameters instead of only one. The first parameter is still that format string itself, the address of that. Then it will think there are two more integers on the stack pushed by the caller, but the caller didn't really do that. Okay, from attacker's point of view, what are we getting from here? So from a tanker point of view, print F is going to print out something for us, and those are on the stack. What? So here we're not only we're not writing, we're just trying to print it out. Print some four bytes integers, right? So in this case, we have our information leakage problem here. We are reading something on the stack that we're not supposed to read. Okay, it's also a bit of a very good. Well, even if the canary, we should be able to read that. As long as, as long as we have, so each percentage X will give us four bytes to read, right? If here is only 20 bytes, if we can fit in enough percentage X, we will be able to eventually read the, the string cell and also read the canary. Right, everything. So instead of percentage X, if we use percentage S, what will happen? Yes. Well, what do we like get the address? Where are we going to? We are going to access. We were. We were thinking the next the two arguments will be address. Mm -hmm. Actually, they can be just garbage on the stack. Yeah. Then we are going to dereference that address, try to print out a string from there, right? So it's very likely when we do this, we are getting our second paper right? Okay. okay. So how can we uh, abuse this? We can use percentage X, or if you want it to look better, 
you can use every time you print out eight bytes, uh, then there is a dot or whatever to separate them, right? This is a trick I use, use a dot. Yeah, you can use other any other symbol to separate them. Or you can try to crash the program, use percentage S or percentage N, because percentage N will look for address and write there, right? Okay, so the challenge we have here is we have some secrets in the program. They are hard coded in the program, and those two uh, local variables have their address. And we're going to print out the address for you, but you need to read. So there are two, at least two printf here, okay? So the first printf is secrets are this. Uh, at this place, this place, can you read them, okay? So any vulnerability here? No, right? No vulnerability here. But this volvo has a vulnerability. It has a buffer, 120. We are getting user input to that buffer, then use that user input as a format string here. Okay, that's it. So let's try to run this program. So this program print out the two addresses. Okay, let's say if we just uh, put some random text, what will happen? It will print out, right? Is there a buffer workflow? There, there could be a buffer workflow, right? Yeah, there could be a buffer workflow um, because there's gets. However, we have calorie. So if we have this long enough, uh, we are going to get uh, Stack, smashing, detected, or whatever, instead of uh, getting the, yeah. So we we'll put a long screen there, we we'll get stack, smashing, and detected. Yeah, program is terminated. So how do we read those two strings? How do those are two strings? How do we read them? Any idea? Could we do something like, let me, oh, wait, wait, wait. I thought I had a, and I'm not, not confident anymore. I almost want to put the addresses that were given from where the secrets are. Okay. As well as an F string formatted like percent, I believe percent S. Exactly. Percent S. Yes. But I then just do like comma. Yes. Location, location. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Okay. But what happens is you have to put those two addresses onto the stand. So eventually, somehow, you can trick the format string, the print F function to use to the use those two right. addresses and print out the string and those both addresses, right? That's something you, you have to do. But what you don't know is when you put them onto the stack, you don't know where they are. You don't know how do you map that person is S to that, right? But how can you do how can you eventually map a percentage S to the address you put there? Yes. No, if you put a lot of percentage S, you may trigger segment report before that. Yeah. But you can put something else. Percentage X, yeah, for example. Yes, yeah, that makes sense too. Yeah. So, what we can do is, okay, so this is what the stack looks like. 
That's primary. There's punt buffer, return address, save the EDP. Then this is the buffer we can control, right? In this buffer, we put address here. The, we, at the very beginning of the buffer, we put two addresses here. That's the address of those two strings, right? We can put it there. Then the VA arc will be somewhere down there. Then we can use percentage X to move it up. Eventually, it will move up to here. Then we can use we re replace that with percentage S. Then we use the percentage S with E reference this one and this one. Make sense? Let's try that. Monstering two or three. Two. Monstering two. So, going to this. We want to put those two addresses there, right? So let's see what's the best way to do that. Um, this one's two. We don't have a uh, address space dot and all the randomization here. So why am I not printing? It's not readable. Correct. So we put those two address at the beginning. Let's say right. Okay, we we'll put those two addresses at the beginning of the buffer. Um, fit this into this. Then, what? after that, we can put a lot of percentage X. I put a to here, so we can see them. So what are we getting here? We print out two addresses. We're first to fit the two addresses. Those addresses could be printable characters and maybe not be printable. We don't know yet. So after that, we put percentage X here to read the stack. And eventually, because we are reading from the argument of print F first, right? And go up. So eventually, what are we going to read? Eventually, what? Yes. So eventually, we are going to read those values, right? We should be able to read those values. We don't know. We don't know how long does it take. Let's say. Do we, do we actually read those values? So the first is the address 
print out of the string. So we have PUV, PUV, then we have FFF something looks like just address. Then this one, this one, this one, this one. This one looks like our address, right? Five, six, five, five. Yeah, that's what we put there. So there's a last percentage S. We put it there. So if we re replace that last percentage X to percentage S, we should get be able to get a string. We do get it, right? We do get it. This is secret one, okay? We do get a string. So for the next one, so how do we get the next one? We just need another percentage S. Yeah. Yeah. We have put a new line here. We just need another percentage S. Then we should print out both strings. Huh? We don't get the second one. Oh, it is here. Yeah, it is here. It's here. This is secret one, this is secret two. Yeah, well, with the new line there, you don't work. When we put a new line there. Oh, the gets. Right, yeah, the problem of the gets. Yeah, so we cannot put a new line here. Okay, so this is how we get secret one and secret two. What is the PUV address that I'm going to to in That's the address. Um, this one, right? What is that? that is. The print address, like what? Yes. So the print app prints that time buffer, right? At the top of at the beginning of term cover, we put that five eight five five ff whatever, right? But this is a this is the integer value when we read this. But when we print out this as a, we're trying to print this as a. No, we are printing it as. We're printing it as a string. Because the whole thing was given to. Print F, hunt buffer. Okay, for so this one, so this whole thing is a, is a format string. For this format string, any characters inside that will be treated as a string character, right? So that's P, that P will be if you check the hex value. So that just bring it up and take it right. Exactly. Yeah. So P. Um, ASCII table. So P, where is P? P is 70. We have 70 there. Yeah, we have 70 there. Then U is, U, uppercase U is 55. V is 56, right? So that's why we have 56, 55, 70, and 0, 8, or 8 is not printable. That's why we are not seeing anything, right? Because 8 is this one. It's, I don't know what this is, but it's not printable. That's why we only say three letters there. That's just a value on the stack. That, that really matter. You can print out it as long as you want. So, which means the most significant three bytes are zeros. You can print out. Oops. Like this.
right? So it's this value. What is this value here? So this is the string. Um, what are we feeling it? What we need this, right? So. Yeah, but which one? If we really want to figure out, figure it out. Okay, so first of all, this value we are printing out has a lower address of the string, right? You understand that part? Has a lower address of the string. So it's something, a lower address on the second string, so which means it's. Okay, it's actually somewhere here. Uh, it will be, it, it will be some local variable. It could be some local variable of multiple. Okay. So, local. I do not really say any C2 here. Yeah, I don't I don't really know what that is, but it's just some value on stand. Yeah. Where is the size of the buffer? The size of the buffer here is big. It's 200, I believe. It's 120. Yeah. Okay, that's that's basically it for today. You can try this out, and uh, next week we'll learn how to overwrite with this vulnerability. Cool. Yeah, cool. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So we still have like. Uh, You have some time. I think someone had a paper on that. Yeah. Yeah, but like who designed the paper? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. You can start working on this. Thank you.